Now's my favorite part. Now we start painting. Well, actually, let's get ready to paint. So I'm going to paint the squirrel first. And the color scheme we have is very fall focused. Starting with our lightest color, I'm going to be using these Dr. P.H. Martin's concentrated watercolors. This is Indian yellow. It's a nice kind of warm yellow that feels a little golden, like a sunset. Then burnt orange. It will start the transition in our color scheme towards brown. Kind of a nice segue here. Antelope brown, nice warm brown, since we have a cool sepia brown going on already. And olive green. For my other paintings, I don't always use the same paints. I just wanted to give you a color scheme so you're ready to go. So if you have colors that are similar to these, that will work well. Just think fall, think red, orange, yellow, brown, and a touch of green as the leaves change colors. All right, still with my photo reference out because now we're going to work on the second darkest darks. Remember that we're working backwards where we usually in watercolor start from light to dark. I'm gonna use the same brush just to keep it simple. This number six round, and it's still good even after using it with ink several times. So a way that I like to wash the inks out of my brush is not just to swish it in the water. I roll the brush against the glass or the edge of the, the cup. And it's just a non-harsh, non more delicate way to get the paint out, out of those inner bristles of the brush. Starting with antelope brown, since I'm working in a wet medium, I'm going to work wet on wet, meaning that I wet my brush, take off the excess, but it's still very wet, and I almost create a paint by number pattern where I'm going to lay down the water in the places that I want that color to go in. So since I'm looking at antelope brown, this is gonna be my second darkest color. Just starting with the face and I'm gonna let my, my brush lose its water as it tapes, tapers out this way. So then I can get kind of this whooshing action that happens when you drop your paint in wet on wet. Even the paint strokes, the brush strokes of putting down the paint, even in this wet on wet way where it's just really gonna do this anyway and just kind of spread out, I still want to continue using short strokes to keep that, that texture of that fur. I might lose it as it dries, but sometimes it will show up in those drier areas. Now the fun thing about this paint is when it breaks down also, you get to see different colors come in. So even with one color, I see the breakdown of antelope brown kind of turning into an olive green. I'm gonna bring in a second color, the burnt orange, for the second darks. And at this point, I'm just adding variety. Now that I have the darkest darks in, I can feel a lot more looser in my painting. And I can have more fun with different colors. Here for his belly, it's a lighter color, kind of white fur. So I'm just gonna use water. And at times I might add in a little bit of the Indian yellow to keep that texture going. I like being able to work in kind of non-traditional colors for these animals. I feel like it gives the painting a little bit of a an edge, a little interest. 
And when you're working with darks and lights, that's the freedom that you get. You can use whatever colors you want as long as they go along with the value set that's before you. A little shadow here where the leg tucks in. And other than a little texture, small dabs, I'm gonna leave some areas white. I'm completely ignoring the tail because we're going to use a special treatment for that. Right now I'm just looking at my squirrel. I've got most of it filled in, kind of reassessing like, now that I've gone crazy with colors, let me zoom back in and make sure that this thing makes sense. And that he might need some darker darks reintroduced. Because once we start with the darks and we build into those medium colors, then all those values start to get a little harder to distinguish than when we started off with a stark dark and a stark white. So I'm going to work on the, on the bushy tail and show you that technique. And I'm gonna come back with fresh eyes because I'll be so honed in onto the tail uh, and look at the rest of his body and maybe bring in some darker browns. All right, so my special technique for sh doing the bushy tail is by using a square brush. Uh, these brushes are surprisingly both size 12. Uh, I'm finding that one is much wider than the other. This is a Richard Simmons brand and this is a Master's Touch brand. I do think I want it to be wider so I'm going to go with a bigger one. And the way I'm going to use it is not by painting up and down like this with the brush. I'm going to be using it vertically to create the texture of the tail. So starting with my lightest color, I'm just gonna start dabbing with that texture in that direction, going in the direction of the fur. Once I get warmed up, I bring in the second darkest color. Being sure to leave a little white so I'm noticing that there should be a little white left here and here. So kind of in the inside of the, the curl or the fold. But it gets much darker towards the bottom. You really don't need to overthink this part. It's kind of fun. You just, the, the more um, concentrated with paint your brushes, the more distinguished your lines will be. The more water you have on it, the more it'll blur. All right, so the trick to that tail is don't overdo it. It is a lot of fun, but we're gonna leave it alone. It kind of has like this like fall confetti thing going on. I really like it. but. I now have fresh eyes to look back on the body of the squirrel. And I do think that it could use some uh, darker darks just to show the elbow of the, of the hand uh, holding what I'm assuming is a nut or an acorn of some sort. So in this part of painting, it'll feel more like what you might be used to with watercolor where we're using our brush to kind of translate shapes and, and doing lines sometimes. It'll be, uh, I'm now using more of a wet on dry technique before it was wet on wet. So I was painting on water and now I'm painting on a dry sheet of paper so that I have more control to create the lines that I'm painting with my brush.
I could go on and on, but we're gonna leave it at this because soon we're gonna bring in that fall foliage in the background.